everyone, this is Susan. Welcome or welcome back to the Rookery and Rose. In this video, I'm going to show you some garden surprises, my first attempt at painting upholstered furniture with chalk paint, and a quick update on the screen porch. Since my last garden tour video, things have started to take off and I've had some pleasant surprises. The first of these were these small bushes that I had decided to move when we created the pathway from the patio into the backyard. At first I was considering getting rid of them, but I decided just to move them to the side to see how they would come up. And I was pleasantly surprised that they're actually some sort of ornamental plum and they have these beautiful pink flowers in the springtime. Whenever you move into a new home and you get the garden that exists, you never know how things are going to come up until they you've gone through several seasons. So I'm really happy to see how these have come up this spring and I'm glad that I saved them. Moving down the pathway now into the backyard, there's an even bigger surprise that I'm even more happy with and that is these mature cherry trees. I didn't know or I didn't have any idea that these were cherry trees when we moved in because they were already leafed out and I guess I, you know, without seeing the blooms, I just didn't know exactly what kind of tree they were. But they are heirloom Kwanzaa cherry trees that have grown to maturity and they still bloom beautifully. They look wonderful um, all throughout the summer and last fall they had really nice color too so i'm really excited about having these in our backyard they look spectacular from inside from outside and it's just such a treat Another one of the projects we had to tackle in the garden was putting down mulch on all the garden beds. Last year we removed tons of ivy. You can see there's a little bit still by the bird bath, but we took out the majority of it because it was choking out all the perennials and we put down mulch. So I was just touring through to see how the mulch turned out. And I noticed that under one of these other plants, which I'm not sure what that is, some rudbeckia started popping up and I'm hoping to spread that out throughout the garden. So now let's head back into the tea room where I'm gonna show you a project I've been working on to get that set up. The first piece of furniture I decided to tackle for the tea room is that upholstered chair that has kind of that brownish um, upholstery and I decided to make an attempt at using chalk paint to uh, paint the upholstery and the wood on the chair. I purchased this set of brushes through Amazon. I'm not sure how good they are, so I'll let you know after I've um, completed the project, but they seem pretty heavy duty and they look like they would cover a number of different uses. This one, pointed one, looks good for getting into crevices and the other two for the paint and the wax. And then I also purchased these transfers because I'd like to add some more of a garden look to the chair. So this is by Bells and Whistles, and it's a nice uh, garden, wildflower garden transfer. 
So I haven't figured out exactly where I'm going to put everything, but I thought if I had a good supply of transfers and then stencils that I'm going to show you, after I get the chair painted, I'll figure out how I want to decorate it. So one of the stencils is this rabbit stencil, and then um, there's also one that's kind of a floral design. So somehow, hopefully, I can incorporate both of them into the finished chair as well. As far as the paints go, I know that I've watched several videos of people painting with chalk paint on upholstery, and usually you use a darker paint if you want to cover up everything underneath, but I didn't really want a super dark color, so instead of that first chalk paint, I went with this DIY, I think it's called Faded Burlap, and it's just a little bit darker, so I hope it will cover most of the color that's already there. But um, I'm going to show you here that this lighter one, I just thought that it wasn't going to be, well, I had to mix it up. So I shake it up for you and um, I'll compare it to the faded burlap. And I think that the faded burlap is just a little bit darker and will cover the initial color a little bit better. But I'll, I'll, I'll show you as I start painting it um, how it's going on and... and how well I think it's doing that. I also had as an option this um, black paint by DIY. I think it's called uh, Black Velvet. But I don't think I'm going to have to use that. I think I'm just going to sp stick with the burlap. So here I have some water um, and a little pan that I'm going to use to mix the paint in. And from all the other YouTube videos I watched, they pretty much say to wet the upholstery first. This brush here I'm going to use in case I have to get into crevices that I can't reach with the other brushes. But most videos that I've watched say to wet the upholstery first and then use a diluted chalk paint. And then I guess in adding layers as it dries let it dry and then add more layers so i'm not sure if i'm exactly following other youtube videos but what i decided to do is make about a 50 50 mixture of water and chalk paint so that i could really wet the upholstery and just get a first layer down so that's what i'm doing here and I'm not measuring, so I'm just basically going by how liquidy it feels. And when you work with chalk paint, you'll know it's very thick and you need to keep adding water until you get it to a nice liquidy um, consistency. So here, as it starts going on, it's really getting soaked right in, and it's very liquidy. It's dripping down, which I think is what most people who do this regularly would say is the proper first step. I'm not an expert. I've never painted upholstery before, so I'm not even sure how this is going to turn out, but I figured I would give it a try. And you can see it almost immediately it gets soaked in and it's not covering the color. But I do understand that a lot of times you need m multiple layers of paint in order to cover the upholstery that's already there.
So as you can see, I had to keep mixing up paint. Um, I didn't mix a whole lot of it ahead of time. I kind of mixed the paint as I went along. So here I am putting in the actual layer of paint. The first layer was so diluted that it was almost like putting water down. And then I made a slightly thicker consistency of paint so that I could um, actually get a first layer down. And I think that basically this layer was more like a 50-50 mixture and the first layer of paint was probably much more water and just a tiny bit of paint. And that was just to really wet the upholstery and get it ready for absorbing in the first layer of the paint mixture. I also decided since I was going to paint the wood the same paint color as the upholstery that I'm just going to go ahead and give a light layer and not worry about having to tape anything off and just give all the hardwood a light layer of the chalk paint as I'm going around doing the upholstery. So I'm showing you here again, this is the extremely dilute layer of paint, which is mostly water. And that's the first thing I did. So it was basically just to wet the upholstery. And you'll see how dilute and drippy it is when I put it on. And of course, you know, when you see those drips, I would go back over it and make sure I got rid of them so they weren't there in the finish of the paint. So here I am going back in. This dried overnight and I made up a new mixture of 50-50 water plus paint. So this is basically the second coat that I'm going over the chair with. I've already done the rest of the chair uh, with the initial really watery mix and then a 50-50 mix. So this would be the second layer of the 50-50 mix. And it is starting, even the first layer started to cover the pattern that was on the upholstery. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm figuring I'm going to have to do many more layers of paint, but I'll just tackle it little by little. The only thing is it's out on the in the tea room and it's been really cool out and rainy, so it's not drying very quickly. So it's just going to take time in between to make sure it dries out thoroughly before I come in with the next layer.
So leaving this to dry, I decided to work on another area of the porch, which is the screen porch. It's adjacent to the tea room and it also loops around and enters through those two French doors into the front parlor. So it's a really nice space. It needs work as well. Um, this chimney is one thing I need to paint or to strip the color. I don't know. But these windows um, face out onto the side of the property. And there's little Gwen coming to say hi. She loves sitting out on this porch. But um, they face our neighboring property and the front uh, street. So I wanted to put up some wooden blinds just to kind of give us a little privacy when we're out there in the evenings. So I was able to find on Amazon some really nice wooden blinds. It actually took me quite longer than I expected to put them up, but they were fairly simple. It was just time consuming because I had to put them up along both side, the side and the front. So there were six blinds that I installed and this is the view from the, the front parlor into that screened porch area. So I hope you enjoyed this little update on what's been going on here and join me for future videos.